So that's what Brian Koberger is experiencing right now. But what if he's convicted? What if he goes to prison for life? What if it's death row? I'm joined now by Larry Levine. He spent 10 years as a federal inmate at multiple security levels, and he's now the director and founder of Wall Street Prison Consultants, a company that helps people to prepare to be locked up. Larry, I always come to you for the guidance on what's to come and what's expected. We just heard the circumstances that Adam or that um, uh, Mr. Koberger is experiencing currently in the Latah County lockup. What about if he ends up in the in the state penitentiary or if he ends up with life or if he ends up with death? Can you sort of sort that out for me, what life is like in those circumstances? Well, most likely he's going to be, excuse me, he's going to be PC. He's going to be in protective custody because if they let him in general population, good possibility somebody is going to try to take him out and kill him. They'll get a lot of street cred in a prison by committing violence against somebody who's an informant, somebody who's a child molester, somebody that abuses women. So his life is pretty bleak. He's probably never going to be in general population. Let's look at uh, Chris Watts, uh, that other Peterson guy that killed his wife. They're locked in 23-hour lockdown also, and that's really what he has to look forward to the rest of his life. They're going to have to, as they say, pipe sunlight into him. When he goes to the rec yard, he'll be going to the rec yard by himself. It's not going to be in general population. He's not going to get regular visits that everyone is going to get. Probably they'll bring the telephone to him. They put it like on a dolly and they wheel it to the cell door and you're reaching through the cell to talk onto the telephone. So life is he knows it is over. And right now, I doubt if he's sleeping because he's replaying everything in his head, where he started, what he did, where he's at. And this guy, he craves attention. I bet he cut himself with those razors. Because those are really deep cuts. I mean, the uh, other individual that was on is in that jail. He's that was in that jail is right. They do give you cheap razors, but to the point that he's been cut, that looks like a self-inflicted wound to me. But what do I know? Larry, it's it's just remarkable some of the uh, the the insight that you have. I have about ten seconds left, but I do want to ask you the difference. And he's still got the presumption of innocence. He hasn't been convicted. We don't know. He could be acquitted. But yeah, sure. What would be the difference between death row and life in prison, just in terms of your daily living? Again, I only have a few seconds, but I do well, want to hear life, that. Life in prison. There's a possibility maybe he'll get conjugal visits. If he's on death row, he's in a cell block with other people on death row. He probably will never get out of this cell, except if he's going, let's say, to a religious service or maybe maybe to uh, visit with medical. So everything for him is going to be isolated for the rest of his life. Larry Levine, thank you. Always appreciate your insight and do appreciate you taking time on a Friday night. Thank you. Sure thing. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.